Okay, Shalom is real. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaku Dash, double honors to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone, Shalom to the elect. This is Matthew chapter 22 and verse uh, 10. It says, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as were found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man which had not a wedding garment, not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? He was speechless. Then said the king to his to the servant, bind him, bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Alright, so with that scripture, um, I was thinking about basically being blameless um, in his truth and not faking the funk. Okay? Because in the end, Yahweh Ba Shimi Yahweh Shai will find you out. You know? And why would you want to fake the funk, man? Here it is. You have liberty, you know what I'm saying, to serve the Lord. Alright? You, you have time to get right. You know, I just did a lesson yesterday. Uh, time. Um, uh, basically, how beautiful it is to have time. Something to that extent. You know? Because right now, we have the time to get right. You know, for the Lord to forgive us of our sins and our iniquities. And um, to us to gain wisdom to uh, withstand in that day. You know, to not take the chip. To not uh, be bugged out in the mind as these other people. You know? So why would you want to fake the funk? Okay, let's see. This is the Urban Dictionary for fake the funk. It says to act with a false ethos surrounding oneself in an attempt to win respect from a certain influential party. Okay, and I and just reading that it, it, my, it, it made me think of the uh, parable when the king he gave his servants um, talents. Some he gave ten, some he gave five, some he, some he gave one. And when he came back. You know, he was pleased with the servants that flipped his talents. But that one servant that didn't flip his talent, you know, basically had an excuse. You know, he, he uh, I believe, some to the extent of him saying, so I, something to the extent of him saying, you know, I feared thee for thou was an austere man, so I, I put your um, talent up in a napkin. You know, then the most I said, what? Thou knows that I'm an austere man, you know? And I also knew that I would require, require my talents with usury, you know? Because it was a parable, but we know it's basically talking about, you know, the Lord's servants. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai servants. Okay, so you don't want to fake the funk, man. Why do that anyway, you know? You just gonna get, you just invite yourself a much worse judgment you know the scriptures even say that it was it, it was better that thou didn't know the truth you know to know it you know basically make the most high um, to open shame let me just grab that actually Hebrews 6 and 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them until repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. You know, and we don't want to put Yahweh Shah to an open shame. You know, and even if you call yourself an Israelite, even if you call yourself out there camping, you could still be putting Yahweh Shah to open shame. How? All right. By lying on his word. You know? By saying that his name don't matter. That's putting him to an open shame, man. Because really, in the scriptures, the only reason why we're going to receive mercy is through the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It tells you that, I believe, in Ezekiel 36, like around the 20, 25th verse. Okay? So, 
hey man, in the end, you know, that's how the scriptures also say, uh, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. You know? So, um, yeah, man, you don't want to fake the funk. I'm going to get one more precept, but then I'm going to end it out. You know, just real quick through the spirit. Um, Apostle, I was watching the Apostle Rumlaut. I was watching the Apostle Rumlaut today. And he was even saying, you know, when spirit is on, you got to do that video, man. So, you know, it's a lot for me driving. But at the same time, yeah, your spirit is on me. So, I'm going to try to get it in. You know? Doing all, hey, the scriptures also say having done all the stand. You know? Get that in Matt, uh, the other parable of Matthew 25, which we always get into, but it's very, uh, you know, important to our faith, to, the, to this faith. Matthew 25 and 1, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their limbs and, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. All right, the bridegroom would be a shot. All right, let's prove that real quick. Uh, let's see, Mark. Mark 2 and 20, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from him. All right, and then shall they fast in those days. Actually, I'm going to start at 19. So lock in. Yahweh shall said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast when the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. All right? So that goes to prove that the bridegroom is Yahweh Shai, and the bride is the, uh, the elect of Israel. Uh, back at Matthew 25 and 2, five of them were wise and five were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil and their vessels with with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him okay so soon out of nowhere you know as the scriptures also say that the lord cometh as a thief in the night Lord is gonna come, man. And those that receive um, the word, all right, whether they took it serious or not, because that's basically took their lamps with oil in it, all right, and that oil represents the faith. Whether they receive this word or not, all right, um, it's gonna show in the end. You know, when the Lord come back, those that was watching, those that kept the faith. Those that weren't faking the funk, all right, but took the word seriously, those are the ones that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is gonna have mercy on, man. You know, in, in the book of Revelation, he said, um, "He that uh, keepeth my uh, word, um, even the same, shall I bring through the hour of temptation." In Revelation three and ten. We could all do more, man. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. All right, so you see how very important this time is, man? You know, for us to, hey, get right, man, before we get left. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was made a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps is going out. Um, but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Uh, verse 10 and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterward came also the other birds and saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not 
Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You know? And then that's what happened to a lot of guys, man. Like the apostles, they always bring out. Like you had guys in the school in, in the faith, man. You know? But they just didn't take the faith with, with the word, man. You know, they didn't, they didn't remember the scriptures where it says, Remember ye the patience of Job. They didn't uh, get into the scriptures how, uh, you know, our forefathers, they had to wait for the blessings, man. You know, it didn't just come uh, right away, man. They had to wait for it, you know. This is Hebrews. And it seems like we may bring out the same precepts, you know. But it's these same, same precepts is going to bring you to salvation, man. You know, it's Hebrews 4 and 1. Let us therefore... Fear lest a promise being left left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Hey, so with that, Lord willing, you I can edify. Shalom to the elect.